Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss the role of fast forward SRGs. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell notification so that you will get the notifications whenever we upload a new video. What are the fast forward SRGs? The suffix "-ase indicates these are the enzymes which will produce the cleavase or hydrolysis and uh, diesterases indicates they are going to cleave the diester bond. So they are going to act on which type of substrates. We know that in many of the biochemical reactions ATP is going to be converted into ADP where one of the phosphate group is going to be removed and this ADP can be further converted into AMP again a phosphate group is going to be removed. So in this dephosphorylation reactions where the adenosine triphosphate is come to adenosine diphosphate and then monophosphate is there any role of phosphodiesterase enzyme? We should not confuse here. These phosphodiesterase are not acting on the dephosphorylation of the ATP as well as ADP. Suppose if you see the structure of the ATP, so in the ATP we can observe a triphosphate bond and at the terminal the diphosphate group is going to be attached with the monophosphate which can be cleaved and released from the ATP. So ATP is not a diester but it is a triphosphate with a terminal diphosphate linkage which is not cleaved by phosphodiesterases. So ATP can be converted into ADP by dephosphorylation reaction where the terminal phosphate group is going to be removed. So this reaction is not mediated by phosphodiesterases. Then which type of enzymes are involved in this reaction? The conversion of ATP into ADP is mediated by few of the enzymes called kinases. Kinases are the phosphorylating enzymes as well as dephosphorylating enzymes. They can convert the ATP into ADP. And many of the times these kinases are going to be working in the coupled reactions. When the ATP is converted to ADP at the same time a substrate is going to take the phosphate group so it is going to be converted into a phosphorylated substrate. So this reaction is mediated by kinases and these are the coupled reactions because uh, the two reactions are going to be mediated by same enzyme. And sometimes ATP can be converted into ADP where it can release the inorganic phosphate and these reactions can be mediated by few of the enzymes like the phosphatases. Phosphatases can also be involved in the substrate phosphorylation as well as the release of the inorganic phosphate. In this way these dephosphorylation reactions can be mediated by enzymes kinases and phosphatases but here the phosphodiesterase is not having any role in their metabolism. Then what is the role of these phosphodiesterases? Phosphodiesterases are mainly acting the two important substrates cyclic AMP as well as cyclic GMP. Cyclic AMP can be come to AMP whereas cyclic GMP can be come to GMP. These two reactions can be mediated by phosphodiesterases. The different types of phosphodiesterases are there which are somehow if you are specific to cyclic AMP, if you are specific to the cyclic GMP and if you are common to both cyclic AMP as well as cyclic GMP. So phosphodiesterases are the group of enzymes which are responsible for the hydrolysis of either cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP. So this is the structure of the cyclic AMP and here you can observe that the phosphorus group is attached with the two oxygens. These two oxygens are forming the two ester bonds. So it is a phosphodiester and here this bond can be cleaved by phosphodiesterases. Now this cyclic AMP can be converted into AMP. You can see that the one of the ester group is going to be cleaved at the fifth position by the enzymes phosphodiesterases. Similarly we can observe the cyclic GMP where the nucleic acid base is the guanine. So again you can observe the phosphorus group is attached with the two oxygens which are forming a diester bond. Now here again just like in the cyclic AMP this bond is going to be cleaved to, so that the cyclic GMP can be converted to GMP. Again this reaction is mediated by phosphodiesterases. Now let us see the different types of phosphodiesterase enzymes because these are the enzymes they are uh, protein in nature. They will have the C terminal as well as the N terminal. The C terminal is almost similar in all types of phosphodiesterase enzymes whereas N terminal is somewhat different and it shows some catalytic activity of the phosphodiesterase enzyme. So based on the N terminal the phosphodiesterase may be specific to either cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP or they are selected for both cyclic AMP as well as cyclic GMP. In this way phosphodiesterase enzymes are having the different selectivity and specificity 
and based on that we can have different types of fast food stages which can be classified into fast food stage type 1 to type 11. Now the fast food stages 4, 7, 8 are specific to the cyclic AMP so they are going to hydrolyze the cyclic AMP into AMP. Whereas fast food stages 5, 6, 9 are selective for the cyclic GMP and they respond for the hydrols of cyclic GMP into the GMP. And the remaining fast food stages like the fast food stages 1, 2, 3, 10, 11, all these are going to acting on both cyclic AMP as well as cyclic GMP. So they are uh, non-selective. They can hydrolyze either cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP. In this way, fast food stages can be classified from fast food stages type 1 to type 11. Now let us see the distribution of the fast food esterase enzymes. These enzymes are widely distributed and few of the organs express more than one type of fast food esterase enzymes. So here we will see three important fast food esterase enzymes where they are going to be distributed. The one of the important one is the fast food esterase type 4. This enzyme is mainly present on the epithelial cells as well as the inflammatory cells like the T lymphocytes where it is responsible for the increase in the inflammation. Similarly, fast food esterase type 3 is present in the macrophages, monocytes and some of the immune cells as well as it is also present on the cardiac cells. And fast food esterase type 5 is present on the vascular smooth muscle as well as the bronchial smooth muscle. And other fast food esterase are widely distributed. So now let us see what is the role of these fast food esterase enzymes and how they can influence the physiological functions. Role in the cardiac muscle. Within the cardiac muscle, cyclic AMP plays an important role. This cyclic AMP can activate the protein kinase A enzymes. These enzymes are going to increase the intracellular calcium levels. So when the calcium is going to be increased, it can increase the contraction. But the contraction in the cardiac muscle is somewhat different compared with the smooth muscle. In the cardiac muscle, the actin filaments are present along with the myosin filaments. Myosin is expressed with few of the myosin heads which are going to bind to the active sites on the actin. But actually this binding is going to be interfered with the troponin which is present on the actin. This troponin forms a complex and this tropomyosin complex inhibits the binding of the myosin to the actin filaments thereby prevents the contraction. But when the calcium levels are increased, the calcium can bind to this troponin and it can produce a conformational change so that this troponin block is going to be removed and the actin and myosin can slide on each other to produce the contraction within the cardiac muscle. In this way, the cyclic AMP can produce a contraction within the cardiac muscle by increasing the intracellular calcium levels. And particularly adrenergic agonists, can stimulate the cyclic AMP levels within the cardiac muscle thereby they can increase the contraction of the cardiac muscle. But the cyclic AMP within the cardiac muscle can be hydrolyzed to the AMP by the fast food esterase enzymes particularly in the cardiac muscle fast food esterase type 3 enzymes are present which can hydrolyze the cyclic AMP into the AMP. The AMP cannot stimulate the protein kinase A so it cannot produce a contraction. In this way, the action of the cyclic AMP is controlled by fast food esterase enzymes, particularly fast food esterase type 3. That's why fast food esterase type 3 inhibitors can be used to increase the cardiac contraction and they are used as inotropic agents. Now let us see the role in the smooth muscle. Within the smooth muscle, cyclic AMP produces the relaxation. Within the smooth muscle, cyclic AMP is not working through the protein kinase A but it is going to fast forward at the MLCK, myosin light chain kinases. Cyclic AMP can promote the fast formation of the MLCK so that MLCK is going to become to MLCK phosphate. So when this MLCK is going to be fast forwarded, it becomes inactive, which results in the relaxation of the smooth muscle. Again, in the smooth muscle, cyclic AMP can be hydrolyzed into AMP by the fast food esterases. Here, so many types of fast food esterases are going to be involved in the various types of smooth muscles. Next is the role in the inflammatory cells. Cyclic AMP plays an important role in the inflammatory cells. So whenever the cyclic AMP levels are going to be increased within the inflammatory cells like the monocytes and macrophages, this can stimulate the protein kinase A. This protein kinase A can block the action of the one of the important factors NFKB, nuclear factor kappa B. This NFKB can produce the gene transcription thereby it can release the 
pro inflammatory mediators which which can increase the inflammation at the same time protein kinase a can stimulate the CREB activity the CREB is nothing but the cyclic AMP response element binding protein so this CREB is going to release the anti-inflammatory mediators which can control the inflammation in this way cyclic AMP is going to decrease the inflammation by activation of the protein kinase A again here the phosphodiesterase can cause the hydrolysis of the cyclic AMP and particularly phosphodiesterase type 4 is going to be involved in the hydrolysis of cyclic AMP in the inflammatory cells thereby it increases the inflammation that's why phosphodiesterase type 4 inhibitors are going to show some anti-inflammatory activity in this way phosphodiesterase are going to play an important role in controlling the cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP levels within the various muscles thereby they can affect the various types of physiological functions because of their wide distribution and important activity on the cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP the phosphodiesterase inhibitors are going to play a key role in many of the pathological conditions so in our next video we'll discuss about the different types of phosphodiesterase inhibitors what is their pharmacological actions and how they are clinically used so that's for today if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video